Hello my friends, if you follow me on Instagram you already know what we're going to be doing today because it's time for another one of my luxury slash Hermes Q&As which if you've been with me for a while you already know the drill. These are the videos where I try to address all your Hermes questions and dilemmas. We talk about some luxury horror stories. I try to bust some Hermes myths sometimes. It all depends on what you guys want to talk about. So I already got some amazing questions from you not only on Instagram but also on my YouTube community tab. So if you'd like to participate in future Q&As, make sure that you're a subscriber of mine and that you also follow me on Instagram. But without further ado, if you'd like to chat about some popular MS topics and hear my really honest thoughts, then make sure to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe down below if you haven't done so yet, and keep on watching. I don't know how you guys do this, but you always come up with the most interesting, most insightful questions. So if you submitted a question, just know that I appreciate you. And I think I'm going to try to start with some of the quick questions, things that we can run through really quickly. And the first one is most comfortable luxury shoes. This is an easy one. It used to be the Hermes Avanta sneakers, which they really don't do that much of these days. So I would say that the shoes that I have been obsessed with are my Celine sneakers in white. And I don't think you can go wrong with Chanel sneakers. Chanel sneakers are incredibly comfortable. They go with most things. They are a little bit more formal than regular sneakers. So I do love Chanel sneakers. They are quite expensive and they can be tough to find depending on the season and where you shop. But if you can find a pair of Chanel sneakers that you like, they definitely have my seal of approval for whatever that's worth. Another question right beside it is how to pack luxury ready to wear, which I do have a dedicated video on that I will make sure to link up here. I personally am someone who doesn't really use that many sort of organizing tools, surprisingly, when it comes to packing, because I am an extremely organized person, at least I like to think that I am, but I don't like those packing cubes. I don't like to travel with garment bags. The way I like to travel with ready to wear is I like to lay them flat and I try to keep outfits together, but I go into all those details in that pack with me video of mine. So I will make sure to have that linked up here for you. Why more price increases? For example, Chanel and Louis Vuitton, which is not a topic that I'm an expert on. I'm sure that inflation is a part of it. Everything that's going on in the economy contributes to all these price increases, but it's not like we haven't seen price increases quite like these before. I think it's normal for brands to continue increasing their prices. But at this point, I do have to say that in for most brands, it is kind of unreasonable and not really justified in my opinion. Like when it comes to Louis Vuitton, I personally could not see myself walking into Louis Vuitton and spending a decent amount of money and feeling good about it. Like they have very few pieces at this point that I personally could justify spending the money on. The same goes for Chanel. Their ready to wear is just insanely expensive at this point. For the quality and for the designs, I think a lot of their pieces are quite tacky at this point. Their bags are poorly made and I know that now their bags are more expensive than Hermes's bags. I think I saw some questions about comparing Chanel to Hermes, which I don't think is a comparison that you can draw. I don't think, well, if you're buying a Chanel bag because you want that status symbol and you only really care about having a luxury bag in your collection. Yes, in that case, a Chanel bag is interchangeable with an Hermes bag. But if you're buying a Chanel bag because you appreciate that ladylike aesthetic, that old school, almost stuffy ladies who lunch look, you're not going to buy an Hermes bag instead. I think they are completely different. They add completely different facets to your collection. They represent completely different looks. They have a different feel to them. They will do different things for you and you're going to style them in different ways. So I would never compare a Chanel classic flap with let's say a Birkin, a Kelly, or even a Constance because they, in my opinion, are not comparable in terms of what they will do for you, for your collection, and for the looks that you integrate them with. So I think price increases are normal. And is this going to affect Hermes? Yes, Hermes is going to continue increasing their prices too. But I would say that it is more important than ever before to be a responsible consumer, to be someone who invests in the right pieces. And before you buy something just for the sake of it, you buy it because you saw it on someone else or because it's extremely hyped. I think you should take the time to really think about whether it's a piece that's going to last in your collection, if it's something that you're going to enjoy for a really long time, if it's something that's going to hold up because making the right investments is much more important now than it was really 
ever before. Thoughts on having a uniform or am I just lazy? I am the exact same way and I feel like there are different types of dressers. I feel like there are people who are emotional dressers. Like the first person that comes to mind is my friend Wen Wen. If you follow her on Instagram, I think you can really tell what mood she's in based on her outfit. If you enjoy a really creative, really colorful, really personalized and customized look, I think you would really enjoy Wen Wen's style. She matches and mixes colors so elegantly, but it's so her, whereas I am the complete opposite. Similar to you, I am someone who has uniforms, or I call them templates, looks, that I will wear over and over and over again, and I won't get tired of them for a really long time, which might not be the most exciting, but I actually think that it's a sign that you know what pieces to invest in. You are more of a responsible consumer because you invest in pieces that you can wear over and over again, and you will be content with the pieces that you already have in your collection. So I think those days are long gone when people had to feel ashamed in a way to rewear the same thing or it was a sign that you didn't own anything else. I mean, first of all, I couldn't care less what people think about me and what they think about what and how much I have. But in my opinion, it's actually the best sign and it's the biggest compliment to your own collection. If you invest in pieces that bring you joy, over and over again and being able to rewear pieces just means that you have a good understanding of your own taste, your own aesthetic, and it just means that you invested your money well because you spent on something that you're truly able to get your money's worth out of. So I don't think it's something lazy. It just depends on what brings you joy. If you love waking up in the morning, being creative and choosing an outfit in the moment, it's great. I'm glad that it's something that makes you happy. Personally, I feel a lot more comfortable and a lot safer having these templates and having these looks already planned. Now, obviously on the flip side, it means that your collection is perhaps not as well taken advantage of as it could be if you rewear the same pieces over and over again and you're not taking advantage of everything that you already own. You just have to find the right balance. But I am definitely a uniform dresser and it depends on the phase that I'm in, my mood, the weather, but I am definitely a big advocate of having a uniform look that you can always reach for. And actually thinking about it, I would love to know what your uniform look is. If you have a uniform look or if you have maybe just a single piece that you always go back to something that makes you feel really confident, really comfortable, please let us know in the comment section. I would love to know what that look is for you or what that piece is that you always go back to. For me personally, you guys probably know by now, I love a pair of black jeans. Saint Laurent does my favorite black jeans or a black pair of tailoring pants. I love Dior's tailoring pieces and a simple black t-shirt and a black cashmere knit. Prada does my favorite basic t-shirts and for knit, again, I would have to say Saint Laurent, which is kind of surprising. I would never consider myself or I never thought of myself as a Saint Laurent person, but the more I think about it, the more I realize how much of my foundation pieces are actually from Saint Laurent. So they are also getting a lot more expensive, but it's still a brand that I go back to time and time again. And then the next question is favorite watches. Now, I am not a big watch person. I don't like really having things on my wrist, but when it comes to watches, the first brand that I would go to is Rolex. I love a Rolex Submariner, which I reviewed before. I'll make sure to have my review linked up here. I like a Rolex Daytona when it comes to other brands. I do like Patek. They have this really classic simple watch that I really like, which I think is called the Patek Ellipse. I think it's called. It's a really simple understated watch. If that's your aesthetic, that would be a good one for you to look into. Also from Patek, they have a Celestial collection. I have to say that anything astrology inspired, I'm a big fan of. And Patek has this collection, which I think is called the Moon Age watch or the Moon day watch. It's not a watch that I personally own, but I would definitely not be mad if I did. But that is a beautiful watch that I really love the look of. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more, I mean, accessible is an overstatement, but something that is not as expensive or as hard to get as Patek or Rolex. I do like the Cartier tank, but strictly with a leather band. I would not get a tank with the metal pieces. If you buy a tank, you have to get it with the leather band. Or I do like the Hermes H watch, but it's not something that I would ever, ever buy directly from the boutique because I think that they are insanely overpriced. They are beautiful watches, but you shouldn't pay 
that much for them and you can actually find them at amazing prices on the pre-loved market so if i can find some great watches pre-loved i will make sure to have those linked down below cartier love bracelet still cute or overdone the most overdone piece out there i would never ever ever recommend that anyone buys a cartier love bracelet at this point if you own one two three four five and they bring you joy if they have a sentimental value to them because you got them from someone important to you continue enjoying them but please do not buy a new one in 2023 i think they're incredibly overdone and unless they mean something to you i don't think that you should join the cult because they look kind of cheap at this point what do you think about the hermes and i never know how to pronounce this this is a new bag from hermes is it called the video poche video pochette is it worth to buy so this is something that launched for their men's collection actually not that long ago it's something that i was asked about and i actually got a couple of questions I think it was it in my last video or the one before where I said I was asked about the bag. So there is a difference in my opinion between being asked about a bag and being offered a bag. So, you know, Hermes to me when they offer you a bag is when they bring out the box and they show you the bag in person and you basically have the choice to say yes or no. But because Hermes doesn't have that many bags to go around and they want to make sure that if they offer you something, it's likely that you will actually take it. They will often try to get a feel for your thoughts and a feel for your opinion on a bag so they will say something like we might be getting this bag is this something that you would be interested in or we have this bag in the back should we bring it out is this something that you would consider or they will say we're getting this bag or we might be getting this bag should we keep you in mind for it most of the times they already have the bag in stock and Hermes can actually see what bags they'll be getting in the foreseeable future. So they might have seen that there is one coming in and they think that it's potentially something that you would be interested in. So I, at this point, won't really look at bags. I won't ask someone to bring out a bag for me if I know that it's genuinely not something that I would be interested in. Honestly, because I don't want to take away the experience of someone getting a brand new bag. I mean, when you're getting you know, a really special bag if it's something that you've been waiting for for a long time. It's nice to get that experience with the plastic wrap being taken off in front of you for the first time, which I guess Hermes is not really using plastic wraps, but the new paper bands. I think it's just a different experience being shown a bag for the very first time. I think it just makes it a little bit more special. So at this point, I will not ask to see bags that I know I'm not interested in. But this is a bag, I think it was this one that I was asked about recently. It was the Bullied Bag Charm, the HAC bag that I all had to say no to. But this is one that they actually had on display. So they said, you know, if we get it in more colors, potentially if we get it in black, is it something that we should consider you for? And I immediately said no. But going back to the video pochette, this is a bag that's actually inspired by their travel jewelry tray, which I actually have one of in my entryway. So let me go and grab that really quick. I think it might be easier to actually show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm back. So this is the piece that that new bag is inspired by, which I think the inspiration is pretty clear. And in case you haven't seen this piece before, this is, they call it a travel tray so the idea is that you can travel with this completely flat as a sh as a single sheet of leather or you can also roll it up so it really doesn't take up that much space in your suitcase you can travel with it like this and then whenever you get to your hotel or your final destination you can set it up you can snap these buttons together and you end up with a little tray that you can put your watch into you can put your jewelry in here you can put your most prize possession all into this tray so you never leave anything behind you can also put this in the safe where you're traveling to so you can you know make sure that everything stays nice and organized in this one tray and whenever you go home you can just basically break this down and put this flat in your suitcase which i appreciate this idea that rms takes something as iconic to the house as this and turns it into a bag i like the fact that they are launching more newer bags for men not that i think you cannot buy bags from their women's line or their men's line regardless of where you usually shop but i like the idea that there is something new that they are launching for men but this particular bag i am not a fan of it's just really strange i don't think they went far enough from the inspiration for it to look like a serious bag it genuinely just looks like you took one of these trays and at home you diy'd it into 
the bag. I don't like the thick woolly strap that it comes with. I don't like the fact that it's kind of a hard shell bag, but it's not quite a trunk. It is just a weird shape, a weird design, a weird idea. I don't think it looks flattering in any shape or form. Is it the worst, ugliest bag that I have ever seen? No, it's not, but it's definitely not something that I would want to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on. I don't think it is just the most refined aesthetic. I don't particularly love the fact that they kept the snap closures, which obviously they did because they wanted to pay tribute to this piece, but I just don't think it looks great on a bag. I don't like the origami-like corners. I just don't think it looks as expensive as it actually is. So personally, it's not a bag that I would go for. If it was a third of the price, maybe, but really I think you can just do a lot better with that kind of money. How did you get the bird back charm? No one in Paris has it. So it's something that I keep getting questions on. I have to be really honest with you, I got really lucky with that one. And the reason I ended up getting the bird back charm is because of YouTube. I think I did. I think I was doing a What's New from Hermes update for you guys. So all the new launches were on my mind when I went to Hermes. And after filming that video, I went to my local boutique, I think the next day or a couple of days later. And because that piece was on my mind, I immediately asked about it. And my advisor had never seen it, but she said that she would check. And they did actually have one. She said that they had just received it in their last delivery. So I was able to get my hands on one. She said that they had two, one that was more colorful and one in a more neutral color palette, which is the one that I ended up going for. And I did ask her again more recently about the exotic one. And she said that she has not seen another one since I bought mine. So I think I got really lucky with that one. So I would say that maybe keep your eyes peeled on the website. I think they do pop up on the website every once in a while, put in a request with your local boutique. And whenever you see a What's New from Hermes update from me, if you see something that you love, make sure that you reach out to your boutique as soon as you can, because I always try to keep you updated with the latest and greatest launches from Hermes. Do you think the quality of the road justifies the price? I do have to say this, but please do take my response with a grain of salt because I am very much aware that I am fully in the cult of the row. I think I said this before in a recent video of mine, but they can come out with the most basic, simple sweater, the most basic t-shirt, and they will somehow convince me that it is the most glorious thing that I have ever seen, even if it's not. But if I want to be really honest, I think they're ready to wear can be really overpriced. I mean, their knits and their coats are way up there, but thankfully the road does go on sale. So I think they're doing a sale on their website right now. And I think obviously all the seasonal sales will start soon. So if there's something that you've had your eyes on for a while, make sure that you maybe check out my info box. I will try to link some of my favorite picks down below for you that are currently on sale from the row because I understand that they can be quite expensive. But if you're looking for, let's say you love knitwear as much as I do and you genuinely wear knitwear that often, I think buying a piece of knitwear from the row can be a great investment. Their pants are exquisitely tailored. I think they do some of the most beautifully tailored pants. So I would say their pants are worth the money. Their knits are worth the money. I don't think I would buy like a $10,000 cashmere coat from them because that is just a little bit too far. But if you would like some more recommendations from the row and what to spend your money on, I would suggest checking out my last wishlist video where I also talked about some of my new shopping habits, which I will make sure to link up here. I talk about some of the pieces that I am eyeing from the brand. And I would say that buying foundation pieces that you know you'll wear over and over again are worth the money. Would I buy a runway piece from them? Would I buy something really excessive? I don't really think so unless you find them on sale and still it's something that you know you'll be able to get your money out of. Thoughts on the quiet luxury trend. This is something that I am going to do a dedicated video on. I want to share with you some of my favorite quiet luxury brands and pieces. This is what I have to say. Quiet luxury to me is not a trend. It's an aesthetic. And I do not want to hear anyone talking about old money, new money. I don't care. I couldn't care less if you have old money, new money, if you have no money. I think it's incredibly inappropriate to talk about money. I will never buy a brand. There are all these new brands that claim that they are old money brands. Some of these brands even have money or the word rich in the brand name. I will never ever endorse anything that has the word money in it. I think it is, I was raised that you should not 
talk about money it doesn't matter how much money you have if you have no money it should not matter so that part of this whole trend i am not going to talk about i'm not even going to stand behind it to me that is ridiculous there isn't a certain look for rich people and people who want to be rich I really don't think it should matter. Quiet luxury, on the other hand, I think is an aesthetic that I personally appreciate. Some of my favorite pieces and some of my favorite brands are considered a quiet luxury trend brand, but to me, it is just an aesthetic that I personally really enjoy. But if that's a video that you would like to see from me, if you'd like to you know, see a video talking about some of my favorite brands and some of my favorite pieces make sure to give this video a thumbs up just so i know that that is a video that you would like to see from me harder to get a second wish bag requires more or less pre-spend which is a really interesting topic it's something that i did a dedicated video on i want to say i mean it might have been a couple of years at this point but at least a year it's in my opinion much easier to get your second and third bag than getting your first one and it's really simple why 